Butter beans, 100% beans. Banana peel. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Hi everybody, I'm Merle, and today we're going to be making something really, really weird. I was online and I saw this recipe for banana peel pulled pork sandwiches. I'm used to people judging me for being vegan. I get it all the time. But even I was like, we may have gone too far with this one. I'm gonna follow the recipe that I found, and then I'm gonna bring in some of my coworkers and have them try it without knowing what it is, and see if banana peels are a viable ingredient that we should all be using. I'm using organic bananas because she used them. I did wash these first, so I would highly advise that. I'm just gonna set my bananas aside. Don't worry, they will not go to waste. I will make a nice little smoothie out of them later. She made this look really easy. Oh my God, it is really easy. I'm killing this right now. You know what, I'm gonna be open-minded and I, I really hope that this tastes good. I'm rooting for the banana peel. We want that stringy consistency, stringy texture, just like pulled pork. This is what you want it to look like. Oh God. Okay, so now it's time to add all of our flavors. It feels like a lot of seasoning for a very little bit of food, but I think that's kind of telling. We'll see. Oh yeah, look at that. You can hardly even tell what it is anymore. I want to get the texture before I cook it and then the texture after I cook it. Just like a lot of seasoning on a cold napkin. <laughs> you can't taste the banana at all. Ooh, wow, that is gross. I cannot believe I just ate raw banana peel. Okay, so now I'm supposed to add some water. Let's add some barbecue sauce. I'm gonna toast some buns, plop this baby on there with some coleslaw, and then I'm gonna try it. You ready? Let's do this. That's pretty good. I'll tell you one thing, it does not taste like bananas. The look is good. The seasoning is on point. The texture isn't quite there for me yet, but like, I'm gonna finish this. This is good enough that this suffices as lunch for me today. All right, I'll be back. I'm gonna whip up some more and bring some suckers in here. Okay, that looks interesting, first <laughs> off. It doesn't look like pulled pork to me. Okay, oh, okay. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Everything is so translucent looking, like it's also thin and papery. What are you looking at? I'm looking at this little piece right here, do you see? The texture is definitely very pulled porky. It looks like an eggplant or something. And then also this, I, I initially thought it's it was a carrot. a carrot. It is a carrot. <laughs> it's coleslaw on oh. it. Oh. All right, I'm going in. Go. I'm nervous. Oh wow, that's another way to do it. I'll give you a couple minutes. <laughs> It's bigger than I thought it would. I'm so sorry. You know what? Go for another bite. You didn't even eat it. I did it? Where is it at? Mm. Ooh, spicy. Very sour. Sour? Better than jackfruit, for sure. Uh, this took a little lick. <laughs> you didn't even make eye contact with me while you did that. Is it what sweet and sour sauce in it? No! I mean, it's obviously not meat, but it's still good. I wish they were honestly more of the filling or whatever the pulled pork. I've used a different vegan substitute ingredient that one may not normally use. Can I, can I guess? What is that? Yeah. Paper. No! <laughs> it's not bugs, right? Cabbage, tofu, soy. No, that's very broad, but no. <laughs> <laughs> it could be anything. It's not a mushroom. No, it's not a mushroom. It's actually a fruit. Beans. No. <laughs> Something you normally throw away from a fruit. So it's like an end? So it has ends. Beans! Yes. This is a bean right here, isn't it? This is a green bean. Oh. For sure beans, 100% beans. Banana peel. Oh! <laughs> like a peel? Like that trash? I'm pasta. eating compost. <laughs> I'm sorry. No way, let yeah. me try this again. <laughs> Man, you know, banana peels can be used for a lot of things. <laughs> like what? <laughs> definitely a little freaked out, but I'm like, I would like, I would eat it again. I actually liked it a lot. Wow, it's pretty, that's crazy. It's pretty this crazy. This like, has a nice char on it. I like pulled pork better than this, but mm -hmm. I will eat this if this is a substitute. I mean, it's pretty good. I'm not vegan, and why would I replace pulled pork with a banana peel? 
<laughs> Why would I do that? It's cheap. Oh. And it may be healthy. And cutting down on waste. That's good too. But you're like, you're not gonna do that. No. Thank Banana. you. I like bananas a lot. <laughs> you can cut. Doesn't this look like fish? <laughs> <laughs> I kind of wish I didn't see this. Hi everybody, I'm Merle, and today I'm gonna be having a little bit of fun with my coworkers. Not so long ago, I did a video where I fooled my coworkers into eating a pulled pork sandwich that was made out of banana peel. Oh. <laughs> Like a peel? Like that trash? I'm compost. eating compost. <laughs> Today I'm making vegan locks out of carrots. I know a lot of people are probably thinking, why would you purposefully cut something out of your diet and then try to recreate it? We all use alternatives all the time. We have sugar-free versions of things. We have low-fat versions of things. I'm not gonna stand here and tell you as soon as I went vegan, I stopped craving meat and cheese. It's just not true. So instead of feeling guilty about that, I tried to meet somewhere in the middle. Hopefully, I can fool some of my coworkers <laughs> into thinking that I'm serving them locks. It's time for these carrots to shine. First thing we're gonna do is to salt them like crazy. It's time. I'm gonna go roast these and then we can prepare our marinade. This part is supposed to be really, really easy because I'm just taking all of my ingredients and I'm processing them together. Cup of water, some soy sauce. Got two tablespoons of capers, two tablespoons of caper liquid, which is just, you know, the, the liquid that comes in the jar of canned capers. You know what I mean. And then canola oil. Now we have smoked paprika some garlic powder, and finally some salt. Okay, last thing. I'm gonna add this nori sheet. It's gonna give it that fishy flavor that you would get from salmon. All right, so our carrots are roasted. They look kinda weird. They look like carrots that have been in the fridge for too long. Let's just go, let's just do this thing. Ooh, look at that color. 10 points on the look. This gets a little tricky towards the end. Oh boy. Ooh, check it out. So we need to let the vegan locks rest and marinate for 24 hours, but I went ahead and prepared some last night. I've always wanted to say that. <laughs> it looks weird. Do you hear that? Like when people try this, if I don't tell them that it's not salmon, they're gonna think they're about to have horrible, horrible food poisoning. <laughs> Ooh, woo! Wait, okay, this one's not crunchy. I think I'm gonna fool some people. I don't even wanna wait. I need to go get people in here because I'm freaking out. Yay! Yeah, we can make it work. First of all, <laughs> What are you oh, doing? Oh, I thought it was, I thought that you were gonna give me ice cream. I really don't trust you, that is not locks. It, it looks it, it looks the part. Oh, wow. It looked like carrot. These look like carrots. <laughs> they are carrots. Oh. <laughs> like from afar, I'd be like, wow, that's salmon. If I glanced at it, I would totally believe it. You tried to trick me. I did try to trick you. I was hoping I'm, you would be I'm deceived. I'm gonna eat it anyways. Just the whole thing. What's that doing? What do you think? I'm aerating. Dude. That tastes like salmon. Oh, oh wow. It tastes like salmon. I taste the smokiness that I do in... Um, salmon? Yes, that's what it is. Like when I used to eat fish sushi and I didn't like cheap sushi and I didn't like it. I mean, it's fish. It tastes very, very fishy. Little that's bit. gonna be the tagline for my new vegan locks. <laughs> tastes like cheap sushi. <laughs> like, talk about this. Doesn't this look like fish? Look at this. <laughs> Pick a good one. Some of them, that's not a good one. That was too crunchy. <laughs> <laughs> Don't spit it out. I kind of wish I didn't see this, but <laughs> it's too late. <laughs> this one? That looks good. Okay. That looks promising. Oh, wow. Mmm, wet. It's wet. It's wet. <laughs> yeah, because you got like a tablespoon of marinade. I mean, lox just kind of has that like 
fibrous, like fleshy. Like salmon has those little vein things. I like kind of want to drink the marinades. It's so good. It's good because like sometimes oh, I got so much oil on my face right now. Are you now. looking at me because I have oil on my face? No, I think we both probably have a little bit. So I definitely um, do. I think this is delicious. I want to make it and put on a salad or something. For anyone who says they don't like machinists in locks, this is a good alternative for sure. I think it soaks up the flavor really well, but if you're going for locks, it's gonna be enough for me. It's not hitting exact locks for really, me, okay. but this is really good. If it was there in the cream cheese and it said locks, I wouldn't question it. Maybe like a little amuse-bouche, maybe like a little app teaser. Amuse-bouche, you really don't hear that enough. <laughs> That's what you want. No, go ahead. More? No. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day. <laughs> you're taking this time. Taking it all. Okay. Oh, Bye. Thank Love you. Yeah. Yeah. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. See you, Jasmine. Bye. <laughs> okay. Great. You can cut. <laughs>
I'm so sorry, I was just so excited. Right now I'm experiencing a different texture in the ice cream, it's slightly crumblier. Hopefully it's just as rich and creamy. <laughs> Is it? No. <laughs> well, that's not ice cream. No, it's not. It's like if you took snow and then you put chocolate on snow. It's light. It makes you feel like you're eating a cloud. Um, what would you guess if you had to guess it was made of? Instead of using dairy. There's ice in there, huh? Ice? It's a byproduct of something that you probably eat often. It's byproduct of something that I eat often. I don't know if you do. <laughs> it's not bananas, right? A byproduct of something yeah, that Yeah, what's a by? Define a byproduct. <laughs> Seaweed? Soy? No. Like, is there a soy or something? You know, like a byproduct of an animal is milk. Oh, is it milk? You didn't use coconut milk. No, I didn't. You eat a lot of canned this thing. Corn! Cacao. <laughs> there is cacao in it. Yeah. This. Bread? Beans. <laughs> yes. Oh my god! Yeah, but it's bean juice. What? How could you possibly guess that? Because I know who you are, Merle. No. <laughs> Black beans? No. Pinto? Chickpea. Chickpea? <laughs> yeah. So what do you do with the aqua? You just like, like yep. mess it all up? Get just it all like that. Me, me. I don't, what are we doing? Why are you making me do this? I wouldn't eat that. Ever? It's a little too sweet for me. The texture is similar to shaved ice, but the taste is very good. Yeah. Somebody give me sample. Yeah. I would say no thank you. Oh, <laughs> there it is. And I think maybe it's less bold. <laughs> That'd be great. I think vegans and normal people would all appreciate it. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just not. You're all normal. Bro, what is this? <laughs> oh my god, I know what that is. Did I swallow this? What's up, everybody? I'm back. A lot of you guys recommended that I try this recipe, so today is the day I'm gonna make chicken tenders out of grapefruit peels. It's only a matter of time before people just stop inviting me to dinner parties. So I saw this recipe first on Stash Sauce, my boy Mark, I learned a lot from him. Thank you, Mark, shout out to you. And then I saw it also on The Edgy Vegan, also shout out to you. But today, I'm gonna kinda combine the two methods that they used, but can we really realistically pretend that it's a chicken tender? I don't know about that. All right, let's get to business. This is a grapefruit. We've got the stem on top, and I'm gonna be cutting it in half. Oh, <laughs> no I'm not. First, I'm gonna peel it. <laughs> okay, so these are peels. This is the pith. The pith is really what we're gonna be using to make these chicken tenders. We're gonna cut you in half. Oh, would you look at that, so beautiful. I'm gonna use this spoon, and I try to go about halfway or a quarter of a way into the pith, so you can just, you know, get around the nonsense. Oh my goodness. <laughs> nice try. By doing it this way where you get a little bit of the pith, it makes it much easier to take it out. This is our finished product. Yay! Next, I'm gonna cut these once more in half. I'm gonna make little incisions in the grapefruit peel on the sides, just like an inch or so. And this is so the cutlets can lie flat instead of curving up. Now I'm gonna dip these in some apple cider vinegar and what this is supposed to do is to help neutralize the bitterness. And then I'm supposed to let it sit for a minute. I've got some vegetable broth here. Now I'm gonna put these in here and I'm gonna let it sit for an hour. Ooh, wow, that is slimy on the inside. Oh, I don't know how I feel about these. Here we are, get you in there. Now I'm gonna dry you off, wow. Now the next step is to rub these down with some minced garlic mm -hmm. and then cover them with salt and pepper. I'm gonna say this much, it no longer resembles fruit. I don't know, it looks like some kind of dead thing, so I think I'm on the right track. Since I'm making this vegan, I can't use eggs to bread these, so instead what I did is I have a vegan mayonnaise to help kind of bind the breadcrumbs to the grapefruit so that we get a nice even fry. So I'm gonna mix my vegan mayonnaise, some water, and some canola oil. If you're not vegan and you don't care, you can bread this any old way that you want. So now for the breading mixture, I'm going to add a little bit of parsley. You can do fresh, you can do dried, whatever you feel like on that day. And I'm gonna add a little bit of garlic powder because although I rubbed these down with some minced garlic, I think it kind of flew all over the place and who doesn't love garlic? So like, the more the merrier. And then I'm gonna add some salt because it's salt. All right, wow, look at these creepy alien chicken cutlet things. These look 
like something. I'm feeling curious and hopeful and uh, a little worried. All right, I'm gonna bread these thoroughly. Oh yeah, we're getting somewhere. This is headed in a, a direction I like. It really feels like, it feels like a chicken breast. I'm gonna bread all of these and that's all of them. It's time to deep fry these and then we can try it. So I want this to be at 365. Be very careful when you're working with hot oil. And I'm gonna do these for about a minute on each side. Such a satisfying sound. Look at that. Oh, that's an interesting color. I don't know, man. This looks a little weird. All of this breading is falling off. This does not look like a chicken breast. What the hell is that? This is unacceptable. I'm gonna do a little bit of problem solving here and I'm gonna double bread it. Okay, this is looking better already. Take two. Oh my God. I think it might've worked. It looks like a chicken. Okay, so I'm gonna finish frying these now that I think I've got a little bit of a handle on things and then I'm gonna try it. It's gonna be great. I just slaved away trying to make this look like chicken. Now it's time to see if it tastes like chicken. <laughs> I don't really know if I want to finish eating this. <laughs> oh God, guys. I kind of want to spit it out. <laughs> I did. That is so gross. Like, that is so bad. That is so bad. Why are they putting this online for people to try and trying to tell people this tastes good? Because this doesn't taste good. It tastes very much like grapefruit covered in vegan mayonnaise and breadcrumbs. This isn't good. I'm still gonna feed it to my coworkers. I'm gonna see what they think and let's let's just enjoy their pain, right? Let's just let's just watch them react to this because this is this is this is bad. This is bad. This is a fun game. Are you okay? Yeah. Three. Yeah. Oh, you're moving over here. <laughs> no, I'm over here. Oh, okay. Three, two, one, go. Oh, okay. Oh my god. What is that? This looks like chicken katsu. This is really chicken parmesan. Yeah. You're lying. No. Oh, it looks like salmon to me. This is uh, chicken parmesan? Yes. Why not? <laughs> Ooh. Salmon? <laughs> <coughs> I don't think I ever want that again. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Me too. Why is it so sour? Can't believe you made me eat that. <laughs> Bitter? Oh, yeah, sure is. Bro, what is it? <laughs> <laughs> oh no. I'm so sorry. I think I just heard your throat close. That's so overwhelmingly strong. <laughs> Did I swallow it? The thing is, I want to guess what it is, but in order to do so, I have to take another bite. Well, I mean, that's just something you might have to commit to. Orange, is it orange peels? Okay, I'm gonna look at it, maybe that'll help. Is it helping? Nope. <laughs> this is definitely sweet potato. I recognize that fruit, that the, the hints of that from somewhere. <laughs> Are you so happy about this? Oh my god, I know what that is. This is like peppermint. Peppermint? Is it lemon? It's not carrot, is it? Pomegranate. Mmm. Tangerine? Hibiscus? No. <laughs> no. Uh, pomp la mousse? What the hell's that? It's grapefruit. Yeah, it is. You don't know what pomp la mousse is? No. There we go. Okay. I, I knew I tasted like some type of. Yes, yes, grapefruit. I'm not gonna say it's bad. Uh, no, no, I'm gonna say it's bad. I didn't say I didn't like it. I was about to eat it. Y'all made me nervous. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's kind of bad. It's I'm pretty. It's pretty bad. It's pretty. Lie. It's pretty bitter. It's bad. It kind of tastes like the like that that citrusy taste stays on your tongue. Like that sure. that relative that doesn't want to leave the house and just stays even though its un presence is unwanted. Agreed. I liked the the grapefruit qualities of it. Like I just you wasn't, did. Yeah, I did. I liked the texture it had. It's such a, a fresh quality, and then you've got like a lot of the he heavy fried elements with it. So, so it's like a chip? It's like a, it's like a, like a crunchy chip? Just charbroil it, let's be honest. There we go. You kind of ruined chicken katsu for me. Oh. <laughs> that was great. I can't wait for whatever else you makes. It's not bad. Okay, now I know what it is. Y'all escaped me. A for effort. Okay, so. B for bitter. <laughs> this is done. Yeah, let's, let's just let's burn that. This was a real treat, uh, you know, as always. I mean, life is about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you know. Death comes to us all. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, you can cut, you can cut.
That is a delightful taco, Merle. Really? Mm -hmm. I don't know anything in nature that looks like this. <laughs> What's going on? My name is Merle and I am here today to offer you another cool vegan substitute. Today we're going to be veering off the normal course of things I do. I've done banana peels. Like a peel? Like that trash? I've done vegan eggs. It's so cute. Isn't it so cute? Some of you may know, I am a true and tried plant lady. I am obsessed with plants. Look at all these babies. Wow, those are really cute. Yeah. My goodness, you're so cute. So today, we're gonna do something different. We're gonna cook with flowers. Mm -hmm. Specifically, a hibiscus flower. Why, you're wondering? Well, hibiscus is actually incredibly nutritious. It has full of antioxidants. You probably know it because maybe you use it for tea, but you can actually eat the flowers, and they're supposed to have this nice, soft, kind of meaty <laughs> consistency. That's what we're gonna find out today. So, I'm gonna make taco meat with hibiscus flowers, and then I'm gonna try it, and then I'm gonna feed it to my coworkers. Let's do it. This is dried hibiscus flour. It smells like a dream. It smells like a, like plums or, I don't know. It smells like dried fruit. It smells good. So the first thing we wanna do is to rinse this out. So I'm gonna go rinse this with a strainer like, <laughs> where did I put it? Oh, here it is. I'm gonna take two cups of my dried hibiscus and then I'm gonna rinse it until the water comes out kind of a pink color. So I'm gonna go do that and I'll be right back. All right, so these are all rinsed and ready to go. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna boil these for about 10 minutes. Hibiscus is very, very, very sweet. So, a little pro tip, I'm gonna add a couple aromatics to this to kind of try to neutralize the sweetness. These aromatics will be some garlic and some onion. Just gonna pop it right in there. All right, so we're gonna let this boil and then I'm gonna let it sit for about two hours. Then we can have our fun with it. I'm gonna go strain this and then we can go make our tacos. Yeehaw! I'm just going with the basics and going with what I know, but you can do this however you want to season it. A little bit of onion powder, some garlic powder, that's some cumin, some dried oregano, chili powder, whoa, that is a lot, red pepper flakes, and then of course, the black pepper and some salt. All right, let's see what we can do here. Check that out. Ooh yeah, sizzle it up, baby. This is really easy. This is like a super quick recipe. I'm gonna make myself taco, I'm gonna try it, and then I'm gonna go feed it to my friends. We've got our finished hibiscus taco meat. Ooh, ah. You look so good. You look like a, you look like a Korean barbecue. It's really got a nice like pulled pork kind of thing going on. You know, this kind of reminds me of like uh, spare rib meat that I used to eat in the middle of the night back when I was a carnivore. I would like wake up in the middle of the night eat it, not heat it up, you know the fat like congealed onto the spare rib? That was my shit. Anyway, not anymore. Wow, it's got a nice, chewy, kind of a meaty texture to it. This is yummy, it's got a little like kind of a tart, tart aftertaste to it, but it's not too sweet, which is what I was worried about. Oh yeah, come to mama. Mm. Oh my God. Yes. This is so good. I'm actually really excited to present this to my friends. I think they're all gonna be on board with this one. This is, this one's a winner. Let's do it. Come on down, partner. Whoa. Yeah, would you look at that? It looks like a taco. It is a taco. You can um, explore it any way you want. See, when you say I should explore it is when that gets tricky. This is how I know it's some, mm. It's just a nice thing to do for a friend. Make them some food, offer it to them. Okay, it's a little, <laughs> some thumbprints on it. But. <laughs> it's just my personal touch. Mm -hmm, literally. Mmm. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Oh, there's avocado in there. Mm. Healthy fats. Astute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this looks like pulled pork. Hey. It tastes like jerky a little bit. I had that for breakfast. Jerky? That's a pretty meaty texture. That is a delightful taco, Merle. Really? Mm -hmm. What are we working with, I wonder? You want me to guess what's in that? It looks like pulled pork, which yeah. is like shredded beef. Lime. Uh, cilantro. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yep. It tastes like meat that was marinated in like a, a fruit juice. What is this? What is this? Well, I don't know what this is though. I can't um, wait to find out. You know what it is. <laughs> well, yeah, I'd hope so. Olives? Olives? Um, I'm guessing it's beets. Nope, sure isn't. Damn, it's not beads. I don't know what to say. Okay, give me the first letter it starts with. No! 
you have to make one guess. I said, I said olives. Okay, terrible guess. Carne asada? <laughs> no. Mm -mm. No. Cranberries? I don't know anything in nature that looks like this. <laughs> Give me the first letter. H. <laughs> that doesn't help me at all. Humboldt's? <laughs> what the hell? Is that, a, is that some sort of a tool? Humboldt's a university in Humboldt somewhere. Yeah, I have no idea. Hibiscus flower. I still don't even have no idea. What the hell? Is, what is that? I would never have got that at all. That's crazy. Oh, it's a flower. Oh, well, that's great. Okay, great. It's a hibiscus flower. Delicious. Honestly, this is probably the closest like looking to some real meat that you can possibly get. This is not even like no bull. This is pretty good. Yeah, good full meat. This just looks like meat. This is definitely meaty. Like this looks like real meat. It tastes really good. Yeah, I like this. It's a solid taco. All right, high five. Thank Great. you. Great, thank you. <gasps> what? No. <laughs> no. I smoked a whole watermelon. <laughs> Hello everybody, my name is Merle, and today we're going to be making a smoked ham out of watermelon. So, basically, we're gonna be smoking a watermelon. But like, before you get all angry at me, I'm not trying to make vegan food look terrible. I'm not trying to make it look scary. I'm just trying to, you know, see what substitutes are worth our time and which ones are just disgusting. On that note, watermelon is like almost 92% water. So can watermelon get meaty? We'll have to see. The origin of this smoked ham watermelon came from Duck's Eatery. Basically, this guy smokes everything and he wanted to have more vegetarian vegan options, so he decided that a watermelon would be a great replacement for a smoked ham. Uh, will it? The idea of using watermelon for smoked ham has been on the internet for a while now. I've seen a bunch of different YouTubers cover it, using different recipes, having different reactions, and that's why I'm so excited today to try it for myself. At Duck's Eatery, this smoked watermelon goes for about $75. That's a lot of doubloons. So today, I'm gonna try to do the layman's version, and hopefully it's not too hard. Full disclaimer, this recipe is gonna take a while, so don't yell at me for this taking a long time. First thing we're gonna do is slice off the top and the bottom, so we've got some flat surfaces to stand this big boy up. Damn, this thing is heavy. And then once we do that, we're gonna slice off the rind. So I'm gonna slice the rind all the way around so that there is no whiteness left. All right, we've got the first pass done. Looking good, Harold. That's what I've decided to name this watermelon. <laughs> Stop being weird. No white rind, it should be beautifully pink and smooth. Wow, check this out. Harold is bald as a cue ball. Now, what we're gonna do Take your very sharp knife carefully, and we're going to make incisions diagonally in our ham about an inch deep. Now, do the same thing on the other side. Okay, wow, that is scored. Score! <laughs> Sorry, low hanging fruit. Ah. <laughs> dry rub time. The dry rub uh, is gonna infuse the watermelon with flavor. Simultaneously, it will also pull out a lot of that water, because like I said, watermelon is like almost 92% water. We gotta pull a lot of that liquid out. But meanwhile, we also want it to be getting nice, salty, delicious, hammy flavor. <laughs> hammy is the new adjective I've decided is uh, real. So we got some salt, coconut sugar, chili powder, smoked paprika, ground cloves, black pepper, some onion powder, and some garlic powder. Love garlic powder. Now we are gonna whisk this up, and now it's time to rub down the watermelon. Make sure you wanna get deep into your uh, cross section. Now, we need to refrigerate this for 12 hours. Whoa, check this out, guys. Look at this thing. This looks meaty as can be. Previously, Harold, this is one that we did last night. This is technically a different watermelon. Lucinda, we'll call her. Lucinda's looking shrivelly. You can see the water is pulled up a bit down at the bottom, which is great. It's exactly what we wanted. So to make this as smoky as we possibly can, we're gonna be using hickory chips. Take these hickory chips and pour some water over them and then just let them sit for like an hour. Strain this out so that only like two tablespoons of the liquid remains in the bowl. And I'm just gonna put that directly into my roasting pan. Then I'm gonna get my roasting rack. Now move your ham to the roasting rack. 
Time to say goodnight, Lucinda. And we want to cover this tightly. Okay. We've got the oven preheated to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 250 degrees Celsius. No, it's not. It's 230 degrees Celsius. <laughs> we got there. And I'm gonna let it bake for 30 minutes at that temperature. And then I'm going to reduce the heat to 250 degrees Fahrenheit, 120 degrees Celsius. And we're gonna let it bake for three hours. This is now the part where you break out infinite jest. After three hours, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna take the foil off. And then I'm gonna let it bake for three more hours. And in the meantime, I'm going to make a nice little glaze for her for when she's done. So first we're going to combine our oil with some ginger and garlic. Now that we've got the uh, garlic and the ginger sizzled up, we are going to add agave, orange juice, some more coconut sugar, oh yeah baby, some chipotle, and this is, so again, Worcester sauce or vegan Worcester sauce. Worcester sauce, it's Worcester sauce. I say Worcester because I'm from Massachusetts and that's just programmed into my brain, but Worcester. Just put it in. There are bigger hills to die on, you know? Uh, some mustard and some salt. Wahoo! I'm gonna stir all this together. Ah uh, yes, this glaze is gonna be magnificent. Okay, so now that everything's combined, I'm going to let it stay at kind of like a medium high heat so it comes to a simmer. And then once it comes to a simmer, I'm gonna turn the heat back down to medium and I'm gonna keep stirring it and let it cook for like 10 to 12 minutes. Alrighty, so our glaze is reduced down by about half. I'll see you guys in like three more hours. Whoa, check this out. This is like a touchdown, like through the, I don't know, sports, the finish line, uh, the quarter line, <laughs> what is it called? End zone, go long. Whoosh, that's me throwing the ham. This looks so awesome. I'm so happy, I'm excited, I'm hungry. Anyway, I'll stop freaking everyone out. Time to glaze. <laughs> I'm gonna glaze you up. There it is. And then we will stick it uh, in the oven to broil anywhere from like five to 10 minutes, just to get a little more color. But I'm very excited because it looks so good. I mean, it can't taste that bad, right? Cause it's a watermelon and like watermelon's fairly innocent. Now I'm gonna put you back in to broil and then, then it's time to try it. And I'm really excited. Oh, okay. We're in the home stretch here, people. See, I know sports after all. It's the moment we've all been waiting for. It's time to try this ham watermelon ham. It looks quite a bit like cartoon meat. Confused. The only word that comes to mind. I'm like, is this dessert? Is this dinner? Is this an appetizer? Is this good? Is this bad? I would say it tastes pretty good. <laughs> does it taste like meat? No. But you know what? It does um, take on a lot of the kind of smoky dry rub that we put into it. I definitely can taste that. It's much more on the outside. Once you get to the middle, it's straight watermelon from there. But you know what? I don't know if people that don't know it's watermelon will know that it's watermelon. I'm very, very excited to see what they think. I think this will be the most confused they've ever been. What do you think? It, it, hmm. Is it a glazed ham? Mm -hmm. I do know my foods. Well, oh, check it wow. out. Oh yeah. my God, what is that? <laughs> you know me. It's gotta be something weird, right? I know what it is. You do? Yeah, I know what it is. How do you know what it is? You post it on your Instagram like a stupid person no, earlier today. Wow. You're the only person who checks my Instagram that aggressively. Well, you know, I have to keep tabs. <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> no, that can stay in, that can stay in. It looks great. I mean, it looks, it's got a nice gloss to it. Did you make this? Oh yeah. Girl. Mm-hmm. You got a man. Mm, nope. <laughs> you want a girl, please? I mean, hey. It smells like dirt. <laughs> no offense. What? It smells like dirt to you? Yes. I would say visually it almost looks like raw tuna. Why is it like jiggly like that? <laughs> it looks almost like cranberry-ish, like a glob. a glob. Yes, there you yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God. Right? It's kind of cool. It is cool. Oh wait, there's seeds. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of seeds. You know, really get intimate with that thing. Whatever that is. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Get to Hello. know it. Hi, is this your first time? Mine too. <laughs> 
It's very um, wet. <laughs> Is it cold or warm? Warm. <laughs> Is that tomato? What is it? I'm gonna let you figure that out. <laughs> I really, really don't like that. Wow, that's so good. Really? Yeah. I can't believe you hate it so much. Other people like it. Yeah, Dan told me he liked it. When I, I mean, it tastes delicious. Like that goes without saying. It's uh, It's got like a nice salty sweet thing going on. The texture is wild. So it's like my mind is trying to rectify like what I'm seeing versus what I'm tasting. You told me you were gonna come teach me how to cook vegan food. Please don't ever come over and teach me this. No. It, like I didn't expect like the burst of moisture. It's like every bite into it comes like a gush of something. What's gushing? I can't tell what this is. Is that a watermelon? <laughs> yeah. <gasps> what? <laughs> no. Yeah. No. I smoked a whole watermelon. <laughs> No. Yeah. Bro, why? Why not? I want to know what it tastes like. That's not what watermelon's supposed to be. You don't like watermelon. I know, I don't like this either. I mean, I guess it makes sense now that you say it. <laughs> that why, like, I didn't really question it. I was just like, all right. My mind is blown. My mind is really blown. Oh, that makes sense. A so watermelon. Weird. I know. It's unsettling. It's on, like Rosemary's Baby. Vegetarian wise, like you have so precious little to eat at most places. Mm -hmm. If this were on the menu, I'd totally order this. Cool, okay, great. Well then, if, I'm gonna take that as a success. All right. Thank you. <laughs> okay, great, right, you can have it. Right? <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, you know, happy to be here. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> Not over that. It looks like a finger. A squash or something. Is that cheese? Oh my God, is this a banana? Oh my, my, woo! Maybe the most convincing thing you've ever made. Hello everybody, my name is Merle and today we're going to be doing something really fun. We're going to make baby back ribs with mushrooms. I love mushrooms. <laughs> Are they a plant? Are they an animal? They've been around for somewhere between 760 million and 1 billion years. Today, we're gonna to be dealing with the king oyster mushroom. The method of this was developed by my boys over at Bosch. Shout out to you guys, you guys are awesome. The seasoning will be different, but the method will be the same. What I'm gonna be doing is more of a traditional kind of like baby back barbecue rib. You know, I'm vegan. You're like, yeah, no, no kidding, we know. I love meat. Ribs were a real soft spot for me, Matt taste of biting into flesh. Your teeth sinking into meat. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and get this party started, make these ribs, and then I'm gonna bring in some friends, and I'm gonna have them all taste test it and see what they think. This is a king oyster mushroom. What we're gonna do is we're gonna slice the tops off. I'm not gonna throw the, the caps away, I'm not a monster. I'm gonna probably chop those up and saute them into something else. Don't be wasteful. The sizes vary immensely between these mushrooms, so you know, some ribs are gonna be meatier than others. It is what it is. <laughs> Maybe go for larger ones in the future, but yeah, whatever, don't take life so seriously. They look like bones. It's Halloween today also. Maybe I'm just in a spooky mood, I don't know. We're going to season these babies up. Let's start with toasted sesame oil. We've got some soy sauce, ever heard of it? Liquid smoke. If you're new to the plant-based world, uh, or you just started being vegan, liquid smoke can give you an incredible, powerful, meaty, flavor and complexity in a lot of vegan dishes that you just can't get. A little bit goes a very long way. I'm gonna move, why are they so far away? <laughs> Come to me. Mix, mix, mix. We got some garlic powder. We got some onion powder, put you in there. Smoked paprika, some cumin. We got some brown sugar. Pinch of cinnamon goes a long way. Classically, some salt and some pepper. All right. You'll notice we have two cast iron pans here. You don't have to use another cast iron pan if you don't have two. Basically, we're gonna be putting the ribs in here and then using this other one on top to apply a little bit of pressure. We just wanna sear the ribs before we bake them. Lovely. Goodbye, little friends. Oh, whoa. Oh my God, it's screaming. Did you hear that? I'm sorry. Aw. Look at the char on that. Good God, man, look at that. Wow, these look amazing. 
These are good to go. These are ready. It is your time. Time to go in the oven. We're gonna pop these in the oven for about 50 to 60 minutes at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 180 degrees Celsius. I'm gonna cover them first with a little bit of barbecue sauce. I will see you beautiful people in 50 to 60 minutes. Wow, look at this. They look so good. I mean, they look just like ribs. They smell just like ribs. I'm hoping they'll taste something like ribs. <laughs> Did you hear that? This is pretty freaking meaty. The only thing this is missing is the bone. This is really good. I don't really wanna share this. <laughs> wow, this is, you know what I'm gonna call this? I'm gonna call this a success. Do I have barbecue sauce all over my mouth? Yeah. Oops. Yay, I'm very happy with these. I'm gonna bring in my friends and I'm gonna have them try this. I think they're gonna like these a lot. Woo! All right, Jasmine, come on in. Hello. <gasps> Goofy movie, right? Yep, but Roxanne. I wanted to be here so much when I was a kid. I wanted to kiss her. Oh! 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 What's this? I love the plant. It looks like just like cuts a cuts a beef. I definitely see bone. You do? The texture is weird. <laughs> I almost lost it. It looks like a finger. A squash or something. Is this a carrot? Oh my god, is this a banana? Is it cheese? Is it a potato? Is this teriyaki Micken? Mock chicken? <laughs> I don't like it. I have not had that sensation in a very long time. Oh my. I, it tastes good. The flavor is very good. And I was trying to decide if I hated or loved the texture, but I want more of it. This is like fat, pork fat. It's like hard and soft at the same time, right? Yeah. I like it a lot. You never like the things I make. I like those pancakes you made me. Yeah. That wasn't in a video. Mm. I f with it. Wow, bro. You're not messing with me either. I'm, I'm looking not. deep into your eyes. I know, you look, she loves to do that. I was gonna say mushroom at first, but I don't think you can get a mushroom to look like that. Is it a mushroom? <laughs> Ew! <laughs> Give it back. <laughs> Gennaro Cantaldo, uh, Jamie's old Italian man friend. He was eating this, he would go, he, he'd take a little bite of this, he'd go. Oh, my mind. Oh, yes! Some of that. Can I finish this? Yes. This is actually really delicious. I'm taking another bite. Give delicious. me like a zero to 10. What would you rate it? 10. 7.8. I'd definitely give it an eight. 10. Oh. All the things you give me, I think 10. That can't be true. Yeah, the watermelon, not, not 10. Why is it like jiggly like that? <laughs> Watermelon, definitely the bottom. That's not what watermelon's supposed to be. You don't like watermelon! I know, I don't like this either. Vegan egg pretty high up there. Vegan egg was the beginning uh, of her falling in love. 7.5 out of 10. <laughs> up and down, I thought you hated it. I you did. told me to quit my job and go be attractive. I, oh, whoa. <laughs> you know, I did not say that in so many words. Uh, that has sentimental value uh, for all of us, I think. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You can cut. <laughs> You're all done. You okay. Bye bye. Yeah. Bye. Good job. Oh, she wants to give me a goodbye kiss. I can. You can't. Not on camera. No, I do yeah. not. Yes. Please stop. Please. Please. My mic. Please cut. Wow. That looks like chicken. I'm just not a fan of this. Sure, it looks really good, but then when you bite into it, it. It's not the same. This is incredible. This is the best one you've done. Hello, everybody. My name is Merle, and today we are going to be making popcorn chicken out of. That was a terrible drama. Jackfruit. Jackfruit got super, super, super popular, like, I don't know, a few years ago because this whole jackfruit pulled pork sandwich situation happened. But today we're gonna be using it to make a really convincing chicken. Jackfruit is like a magical vegan substitute. It is the largest tree-borne fruit. It can grow up to 80 pounds. It's a giant, like, spiky, kind of looks like a dragon egg type thing. And you can buy them whole, probably not very accessible for most of you, or you can get them canned, which still might not be that accessible for a lot of you. For the sake of this video, I'm going to be using the canned jackfruit, mostly because I want it to be more relatable for you, but also because I don't feel like dismantling a giant jackfruit. It's a pain. It's, it's just such a pain in the 
So if you don't see it at your local grocery store, check the interwebs. Well, let's not waste any time, let's go ahead and start cooking. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to take our little bouillon cube and add it to some warm water. Jackfruit, especially canned jackfruit, has a really briny flavor, so we wanna try to pull that out. That way we can neutralize the flavor and then add whatever flavoring that we want. Here we are, this is all perfectly dissolved. So now I'm gonna open my jackfruit, I'm gonna strain this puppy out. While you have this strained, you wanna go through and pick out any seeds that are in there. We don't wanna be dealing with that. I don't see any in here. We're gonna put these straight into our bouillon. Then we're gonna let these sit for like 30 minutes. They're just gonna marinate in there. I'm gonna set this aside and I will be back in 30 minutes. Okay, so this has been sitting for 30 minutes. Now we're gonna just drain you out. Beautiful. All right, now it's time to mix together our spices. So we've got garlic powder. <laughs> That's been sitting there for a minute. <laughs> Garlic powder, like I was saying. Some onion powder. Oh my God, I swear to God. Let's do this to all of them first. A lot of people don't tell you this, but when it comes to onion powder, you're supposed to massage it first. And we've got some smoked paprika, some cayenne, some regular paprika. Make this saucy. And then some salt and pepper. Mix all your spices together. This is all mixed. We're gonna take our jackfruit. Mix it with about a tablespoon of our spices. Don't get rid of these spices, you're gonna use them again later. Set those aside. Mix these up. Mmm, my God, it smells so good. And now we're just gonna transfer these to our baking sheet. These really look like meat. I mean, chicken, pork, you name it. Yeah, look at that. Very fleshy over here. So these are all ready to go. I've got the oven preheated to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 190 degrees Celsius. And we're gonna pop them in there for about 15, 18 minutes, let them dry out. And then we're gonna get to frying these bad boys. So I will be back. Okay, so while we're waiting for the jackfruit to bake, I'm going to mix together our batter and then the flour mixture that we're gonna use to coat these before we fry them. I'm gonna mix some non-dairy milk. I'm using almond milk, unsweetened. And then we got about a half cup of flour, some salt and apple cider vinegar. All right, so this is gonna be our batter. I like working with a batter personally when I'm frying things. It makes everything stick to it. The coating is much more even. So be very careful and very safe when you're working with hot oil. Ooh, that sound. I'm sorry if that sound makes someone wanna like crawl out of their skin. And now that I've pointed it out, it probably will. And now we're gonna take our remaining spices, cause you didn't throw those away, right? And then we're gonna add a cup of flour, cornstarch. This is all set. I'm gonna go get our jackfruit and then we can fry. Okay, we've got our jackfruit. So what's important with the fryer is you wanna make sure your oil is at about 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Don't forget, that's 190 degrees Celsius. Let's coat this in the batter first. Mm. This is slightly more fun than I expected. Okay, make sure we get all the excess off. When you get the excess off, it ensures that you get a nice even coat when you're frying. All right, look at you, what a superstar. That looks perfect. I'm gonna plop you right back on there. All right, she's ready. Here we go. Oh my. Yay! We're gonna let these fry for about two to three minutes. All things considered, this is a pretty easy recipe. Ooh, these are frying up like chicken. These look cool. Ah, uh, this is bringing me back to my KFC days in high school. All a girl can dream for is a nice crispy outside and then like a succulent, juicy inside. I'm like more proud that I successfully fried these than I am of how they come out. A couple of them are fighting over there. Oh my God, calm down, break it up. I would recommend not crowding the frying pan when you're doing this, because every time you add more in, it's gonna bring the temperature down. So you have a little more control and you can probably work more efficiently if you just do a few at a time. They're looking lovely. Oh, I'm scared. I don't like oil. This is why I don't like oil, it's unpredictable. Pull you puppies out. Yay, they look great. Very proud of myself right now. All right, let's fry the rest of these up and then I'm gonna give them a try. All right, look at these nugs. They are so cute and they're crispy. Honestly, they look the part. Now I'm just gonna add a little bit of lemon and then of course salt, cause it's salt. It's that special time of the episode where we see if I have a wild success on my hands or a horrible failure. <laughs> Smells great. Looks great. Oh my God! Oh yes. my God. 
This is my favorite thing I've ever made on the show. Hands down. Hands down. Oh my God, this is so freaking good. I just bit into this and it literally exploded in my mouth. This is like jewels of flavor. I am so happy right now. Oh my God, this is honestly exceeded expectations. Wow, jackfruit. Give it up for jackfruit, come on. Oh man, this is so exciting. Oh my God, okay, I wanna keep eating these, but I can't. This is a good day. This is a very, very, very good day. I'm gonna go get some people up here, have them try this. I'm so happy, I'm so happy, I'm so happy. Yay! All right, here we are. <laughs> Silence. Oh, oh, little nugget. Wait, I have no idea what this is gonna be. It looks and smells a little bit like popcorn chicken. They look like chicken nuggets. It looks like jackfruit. It looks like popcorn chicken or it looks like fried calamari. I love both things. Okay. Oh, this is much no. It's too soon for you to say that. You can't say those words. You're gonna scare me away. You're gonna scare me away. Oh, I'm dip dip. That looks like chicken. The frick? It is chicken. <laughs> no. I'm just not a fan of this. I mm -hmm. like it. Wow, that's really good. Look at that, that's freaking chicken. But I have no idea what this is supposed to be. <laughs> My first thought is it looks like cauliflower, a clove of garlic, and maybe a carrot? <laughs> is that a garlic clove? Is it a mushroom again? No. What is that? You really don't know? It's jackfruit. Jackfruit? Yeah. We love jackfruit. We really do. I think it's, it's jackfruit. It's jackfruit. It's jackfruit. Yeah. Wow, I would not have guessed that. This is incredible. This is the best one you've done. Really? Hands down, the best thing you've given me in this show. Honestly, the more I eat it, the more fried chicken it tastes like. Yay! That makes me happy. It looks like it enough and it has a good enough flavor that it would work. If you were to put this in front of me, I would 100% eat it. Flavor? Yes. It's a 10. Woo! Likeness to fried chicken, it's a six. I'm gonna give it a five. What? I'll give it a 10. 10! I love it. Five. Okay. Likeness overall, seven. 9.5. Oh my god! 9.5. It's the holidays, so you don't want to get an extra 0.5. This is a 10 out of 10. What? A 10 out of 10 for the, that's a holiday bonus. Okay, so 10 out of 10 or 9.5. What are you gonna say? <laughs> Stop. They got me excited. Oh my god! No freaking way! way. You. Ah! <laughs> this is amazing! Today we are going to be making calamari with coconuts. Honestly, we could do a video just about how to open a coconut. We're gonna give you that and more. If you were a child, do not do this. Do not do it alone. Get an adult to help you, please. Honestly, even if you're an adult, get another adult to help you. Don't at me if you chop off your finger. Coconuts are cool. Coconuts are actually sneakily a very good source of fiber. What we're looking for is to scoop out the meat inside of this coconut, because it's got a nice squid-like texture. Without further ado, let's open this bad boy. To break into a coconut, you are gonna need a very sharp knife and a mallet. This is a vegan show, just saying. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna shave down this top part here with our very sharp knife. Very, very, very sharp knife. So we wanna shave it down until you see the brown little head underneath, a little fire cut. This isn't even the dangerous part. This isn't even close. This is the brown that we want. Do you see? I'm in a weird mood today. That was just me warming you up. It only gets more and more dangerous from here. Because we're gonna take this butt of this knife and you're gonna grip this in your safety grip, which is like holding a pencil. Somebody's gonna yell at me for this, I know it already. Firm grip, firm. A firm grip is a must. You also need to have passion behind your wrist when you're doing this because you can't have any second thoughts. There's no going back. And focus, okay? Here we go. Okay, you're gonna do this a lot. Ah. That's the sound we like to hear. <laughs> My points for being chosen for the roster of being on a desert island just skyrocketed just now. Inside of coconuts is this delicious liquid we call coconut water. You probably buy some horrible version of this at the grocery store, but there is nothing better than coconut water from a fresh coconut. Ah, oh, the sound of life. Look at this beauty. Looks delicious. This one looks pretty mature. You want to keep the mature coconuts around. In life too, you know, the mature coconuts are the ones that'll have your back. Just a little life tip. Ah! I want to drink it out of this. It's worth it. It's delicious. Let's empty our coconut water out. That is good stuff, guys. That is full of electrolytes. We got a damp washcloth. Lay it out here. Cutting board on top. 
We got no more of that risky business going on. We're going to come down in a final action here. One final chop. Like that. You're going to put your other cloth over the top of this bad boy. You could take your mallet. This is where the wrist comes into play. If your wrist gets all wishy-washy, zigzagging all over the place, you're not gonna have a consistent straight cut. It's gonna go all over the place. You're not gonna be able to scoop the meat out as well as you would otherwise. Okay, here we go. Hell yeah, oh my God, damn. All right. Oh, would you look at that. Now see, that is the stuff of the god. Before we get to these two little friends of ours, we're going to mix up our marinade. For the marinade, we're gonna use caper juice, olive oil, lemon juice, lemon zest, and my favorite thing in the world, garlic. Give it a little stir. Cool, I'm gonna set this aside. So to clean the meat out, we're going to take a spoon now, this is the opposite. This is the come down from the rush you just had from pounding this thing into oblivion. Now we're going to be tender and gentle. What you wanna do is try, if you can, to get the meat out in one fell swoop. So this is what you want. I did a good job. You basically want one big slab like this, because then we're gonna cut it into calamari strips. Pick off some of the, you know, the little husk parts that stick to the meat. So I'm gonna cut these into half inch strips, and then I'm gonna plop them directly into my marinade. It looks like a squid. When I first heard of it, I was like, what? But now I see it. Okay, put them all in there. I'm gonna cover this up, and I'm gonna refrigerate it, and I'm gonna let this marinate for about two to four hours. I know it's a long time. Start reading that book you've had on your nightstand that you're pretending that you're gonna finish, but now you're not going to. Take this opportunity to do that, and I will be back in two to four hours. Goodbye. Oh my God. Okay, that's as good as that's gonna get. Okay, all right, so we've got our little calamari strips. Out of the fridge, ready to go. And then over here, we've got our mixture. We're gonna have uh, some non-dairy milk. I'm using almond milk, unsweetened. And then some apple cider vinegar. Mix it up a little bit. So over here, we've got our dry mixture. And we're gonna add some all-purpose flour, some semolina flour, and some salt. We're gonna work right down the line. We're gonna take out our marinated calamari strips. We're gonna put them in our liquid mixture. Then we're gonna let it drip off all the excess, and then you toss it in the dry mix. I use my hands, because it's the easiest way to evenly coat it. And this way you can knock off all the extra stuff too, so you don't get like chunks of flour when you're frying it. I'm gonna put it right in. <gasps> ah, ah, yay! The one-handed uh, dry shake is after you've been doing it for a while, you know? Just so you know I'm a pro. Wow, these crisp up pretty quickly. Woo! Yeah. Ah, I don't like that, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. But this is a beautiful strip. Yay, this is how I've decided I feel comfortable operating around the hot oil. Oh, oh my God. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Thank you. Oh, oh my God. I don't like it. All right, look at these. These look amazing. I feel like if I were to put these in front of someone, they wouldn't know the difference. I don't think they'd ever think there was anything suspicious, but we have to see what they taste like. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. I don't know about coconut as calamari, I'm not gonna lie, but. Oh my God, Woo! that is fresh. I feel like I'm floating in the ocean right now. Whoa, cool. I like it. I like it, I like it, I like it. Just when I think, you can't possibly get better. I just do it. I do it again and again and again. This is humble hour with Merle. I'm very excited about this, feeling very proud. I'm gonna go ahead and bring my friends in. Let's have them try this. We got nothing to worry about. I feel like they're gonna love this. It kind of looks, looks like, like a blue an onion. Ah! <laughs> These are french fries. No, they're not. French fries? No. French fries are vegan already. <laughs> they're little fingers. <laughs> mm. oh. 
interesting. Shrimp cocoa. Mmm, mmm. It's an onion ring. Wait, that's already <laughs> Yes, calamari. It meant to be calamari? Yes. Oh, calamari? Yes! Yay! Oh my god, that makes me so happy. This is so weird because the texture is so, so spot on. Well, let me and ask you this. Are you liking it? I, no. <laughs> what is this made of? You gotta guess. Some type of tofu paper. I'm gonna guess onion without no. even biting it. No? No, it's not an onion. No. <laughs> is this a mushroom? Nabi. Oh, I know what that is. You do? It's coconut. How do you know? I love coconut flesh, that's why. Mmm. Are you kidding? This is impossible! <laughs> oh my god! No freaking way. way. This is a coconut? Yeah. This is amazing! You're in a restaurant. Here you go, sir. Mmm. Oh. Can I take you out after uh, your shift's over? That's what I would say. Not to women now, though. Likeness to calamari, I'm gonna say a nine. Solid nine. Nine. <laughs> nine? Yeah. I would say seven. <laughs> I gave it a two. <laughs> Overall, I'm gonna give it a 10. 7.5 out of 10. It's so good, you like it? I do, I really loved it. I'm very pleased with your work, well done. No, no. Yeah! <laughs> okay, please <laughs> She's cut. excited. <laughs> please cut. Cut, <laughs> cut, 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 great. <laughs> Hello everybody, my name is Merle and today we are going to be making vegan fish and chips out of celery ash. What the hell is that? No, it is not a mandrake. It is also not the root of celery. It is essentially the same plant that celery is, but it's cultivated for different reasons. So let's stop talking and let's, let's do this way. Okay, so I've preheated the oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 204.4 degrees Celsius. What we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the top off of this celery root, and then we're gonna just use the knife and we're gonna do that to, to peel around the entire guy. This is what it looks like on the inside. It's much better to use a knife than an actual peeler. Your peeler will get clogged up and nobody needs that. So don't forget to compost. You just wanna take a thin layer off with your knife and it'll look like this. This is what you want to see. Great. Doesn't have to be perfect, just has to be pretty much bald. Now, we're gonna slice these up into about two to three inch rounds. Like this. Okay, so now we're gonna take a nori sheet. This is just about a quarter of one sheet. And I'm gonna mince this up very, very finely into like a kind of a powder. Ooh, that's a fun sound. That's like an ASMR moment if I've ever heard. I don't think I have the ASMR thing, but like that sounds good, right? And before I put this on, I'm gonna add my olive oil. There we go. Some salt. Now, nori. Oh, that looks cool. All right, now I'm gonna mix this up. So once you've got this all well mixed, you're gonna put these bad boys right on your baking sheet. I'm just gonna go pop these into the oven for about 25 to 30 minutes, and then I'm gonna let them cool for like five minutes before I bring them back out. I'll be right back after that. That's all roasted and good to go, but first we have to make our marinade. We're going to add some canola oil, some olive oil. This is caper brine. It's like three quarters of a cup. Lemon juice. Got lemon zest, some rice wine vinegar, and some sugar. Now I'm going to shred up the remaining sheet of my nori and just add that in there. So you especially wanna add these nori sheets because these are what are gonna give you that yummy, fishy flavor that you're craving in fish and chips. All right, so let's add our celery act to this. So I know you're gonna hate this, but you're gonna wanna let these marinate for about six hours to overnight. Luckily, I've already gone ahead and done that because I'm an overachiever. So we've got some flour and some cornstarch, some baking soda and some salt and some beer. Okay, so we're gonna add our baking soda and our salt to the flour. There we go, out you go. Mix you up and then just a good old fashioned lager. Seems only fair. And I wanna mix this up. I'm gonna stir it in slowly 
and consistently so we can really mix this up. This is going to be our beer batter. All right, so we've got our cornstarch, we've got the batter. Now I'm just going to take my celery root out of the marinade. I'm just going to let those sit there for like two minutes or so. All right, so our oil is at 375, and now we're going to take our celery root and we're going to coat it very evenly in our cornstarch. All right, plop it into the batter and use my fork to maneuver this bad boy around so it's totally coated. I'm gonna pierce this and let that drip off a bit. Not bad at all. I'm telling you, confidence is everything. So we're gonna let these cook for about three to four minutes and I'm gonna flip it halfway. Ooh, that looks nice. Look at that golden brown, almost looks like a donut. These look so beautiful. Yay! Okay, so now these are all good to go. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt on top because there's pretty much nothing that salt can improve. Yay, look at how beautiful this is. Come on, looks wise, I feel like this is like a nine or a 10 out of 10. I'm feeling very excited about this, but uh, before I give it a shot, I have some unfun facts. There is a reason that I decided to do fish and chips and try to veganize it, and it's because there are several studies that believe that by 2048, there's a possibility that we could start to see fishless oceans because of overfishing. How is that possible, you're wondering? And I totally understand that, because like, the ocean's huge, and we have a bunch of them, and there's fish everywhere. Another really unfun fact is that around 40% of the 160 billion pounds of fish that are caught every year are discarded. So that's like 63 billion pounds of dead fish just thrown back into the ocean. So, all of this to say, don't worry, I'm not saying you can't eat fish, you can do whatever you want. What I'm trying to do is offer you like, you know, a favorite meal from forever that happens to be vegan and hopefully tastes just as good. Okay, now we can have fun again. All right, let's see. Whatever this is, it tastes delicious. The texture is spot on. Fish doesn't have a ton of flavor, so from what I remember of like a classic fish and chips, I think this hits the nail on the head. I can't believe this is a root. I don't feel like people are gonna be like, this doesn't taste good. I just think they're gonna be very confused as to what this tastes like. But we'll see. Um, all right, I'm gonna bring in my victims and I'm gonna eat the rest of this. Stay tuned. Oh! <gasps> fish and chips, fish and chips. You can't have fish. No, I know. No, that's not vegan. It looks like cod. It looks like a bit of battered cod. Very good, what does it smell like? Cod. <laughs> <laughs> smells like chicken soup. You really, what? <laughs> so I'm pretending I'm in England right now. Can you do an English accent? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what the is that? Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> is that what I do? <laughs> okay, okay so this is your fish and chips. Ah, it's a strange accent you have there. Where are you from? That's certainly not. That's that, that is English. more British than yours. <laughs> I like it a lot. You do like it. This is tame. Oh, it's these really are... good. Me, oh man, used to take me down. <laughs> that was Jamaican. Hmm. You don't like it. Yeah, I can tell you don't like it. I'm just trying to be nice. <laughs> to this nice woman, please. <laughs> what the f is this? Radish hearts of palm. Jicama, that an artichoke? Radish. What is this? Onion. A gourd. Garlic. This can't be another mushroom. Potato. Is it a potato? <laughs> no, but it's in the family. Jalapeno. What's in the potato family? Dude, is it like some weird thing I'm not gonna know? Dude, yes it is. It just doesn't taste like anything. <laughs> Radish. Like I really and truly don't know what this is. It's celery root. I was totally gonna say that first, yes. but I decided not to. Oh, no way in freaking hell I was gonna get that. Celery root. That's why I don't like it. I don't like celery. You don't like I celery. I don't like celery. What is it with celery? Celery is the most innocent vegetable. Know, what is everybody's I vendetta against celery? It tastes like water and baby's I breath. I don't know. It doesn't taste like celery, does it? No. The texture is delightful. Would not have thought it was fish, but okay. you know, it kind of looks like it because of the flakiness. 
the flakiness is crazy. Like this looks so much like fish and the texture tastes like fish. Oh. It excels in flavor, but it doesn't fall too short in texture. Okay, likeness to fish, zero. I give it an eight. Likeness to fish, two. 7.4, a solid seven. I like it more than fish. Does it taste like fish? I mean, I wouldn't put it on sushi. This is better than a lot of fish and chip dishes I've had. I just want to eat more of it. Hot tip to the chef. Ah, uh, yes, keep that up. Hot tip to the beautiful chef. You're like, shut the f up. I'm <laughs> take <laughs> that was trending. Okay, so you don't like it. You can yeah, tell me like 5,000 different ways. Thank you for I like trying. You. I know, I know. Like you, please, okay. don't break up with me just because I don't like it, please. I was gonna joke and break up with you, but then I thought please. that might get too real. Okay, no. okay, 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 you can cut. No, can cut. no! no. Oh, it's just a yolk. Is that a real egg? <laughs> <laughs> That's an egg yolk. Oh my god! What the f is going on right now? Come on. Hello my friends, Merle here, and today I am back to my old tricks of veganizing something that you know and love. Or at least something that you know. So today is gonna be really, really, really special. And I'm not exaggerating. Today I'm not even a chef. Today I'm like a mad scientist because you asked for it, I'm giving it to you. Today we're gonna make a vegan runny egg yolk out of tomatoes. I must have gotten hundreds of requests to do this really cool recipe. There was this like sort of viral video that Insider did at this restaurant called Crossroads Kitchen in West Hollywood in LA. They do this really convincing vegan runny egg. It's got the color, it's got the pop, it's got the ooze. It looks like an egg yolk. I know, I've already tried to recreate an egg. It did not look like this. This is next level. And today I am truly up for the challenge. I wanna give you guys what you wanna see. It might not be easy, but we're doing it. So buckle up buttercups, this is gonna be a wild ride. So the first step is to take a blender basin and you're gonna put it on a food scale, and then you're going to zero out the weight. And then we want 1,000 grams of cold water to be measured out into the blender basin. Oh, 1,026, all right. Let's see how this dance is gonna go. Oh, 1,000, yes. Okay, so now we're gonna add our sodium alginate. Sodium alginate is extracted from a brown seaweed that grows in cold water. It's used in cooking to add to things to add viscosity or to help bind things together. Essentially, it's an emulsifier. Add the sodium alginate to your water and then you're gonna blend that on high speed for 60 seconds or one minute until the sodium alginate is completely dissolved. Wow, that was crazy. So this is completely emulsified into the water and now it's got a totally different consistency. It's not solid, it's not liquid, it's a little somewhere in between, which is what we want because when you think of an egg yolk, it's always somewhere there in the gray area, right? And what we wanna do is pour this into a nice shallow wide bowl. It has the texture of lubricant. It doesn't smell like anything. It doesn't taste like anything. I'm going to just cover this up, and then now I have this all covered up, I'm gonna go refrigerate this for two hours. You could also just refrigerate it overnight, but I'm gonna go do that, and then we're gonna work on our yolk. I'm gonna core these, and essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna confit these tomatoes. It's a French cooking technique that was originally used to preserve meats, but essentially what we'll be doing is roasting these at a very low temperature over a long time with a lot of oil. We want one and a quarter pounds of these tomatoes. Make sure you have a good mixture of red and yellow and orange in there, because that's gonna determine your color. You want a neutral oil, I'm using canola oil. Should almost cover your tomatoes, basically. And then we're gonna add some salt. I'm gonna toss this all together. I'm gonna go ahead and roast these at 325 degrees Fahrenheit. It's 160 degrees Celsius for about an hour and 20 minutes. And then we'll revisit these cuties. Okay, so we have our confit tomatoes. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a slotted spoon. We're gonna take these out of here and plop them right into the old blender. So you can just let the oil drip down. Now I'm gonna separate the oil from any of the tomato liquid or water that may have been released during the cooking. Okay, so we wanna keep the oil. So we're gonna blend up these tomatoes at a very high speed until they're completely smooth. Yeah, nice. Okay, well, I just realized that I got a huge 
well not huge, that's dramatic, but I got an oil stain on my shirt and I love the shirt so I'm taking this off and I'm gonna go clean this and wear something else and wear an apron, so there. That's just so you know why I'm not wearing the same clothes. Okay, we're back. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take our tomato puree and we're gonna go ahead and run it through this sieve and I'm gonna just make sure it removes all of the pulp or any skins that are still left in our puree. All right, so I have a nice high walled skillet here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some water and about a quarter cup of minced shallots. I'm gonna put the heat on and let it heat up over medium heat for about five to eight minutes until it starts to steam. Kinda looks like queso. Okay, so now this is good to go. I'm gonna strain this tomato mixture through a fine mesh sieve into the blender and I'm just gonna add one tablespoon back from these strained shallots. We don't want too many shallots because then the shallot flavor will come through too strong. And then do what you will with the rest. I'll leave that up to you. All right, beautiful. So we've got our tomato mixture in here. Now we're just gonna add our black salt. The black salt is what's gonna give us that really nice sulfuric eggy flavor and smell. So I'm gonna go ahead and blend this at a high speed for about 20 seconds. I'm gonna lower this to now a medium speed and I'm gonna slowly add this reserved tomato oil. So basically I'm gonna slowly stream this in as this is blending over a medium speed. All right, this is completely emulsified. Maybe I've just gotten used to the eggy smell, but it smells pretty good. Now I'm gonna set a medium bowl on my kitchen scale and I'm gonna zero out the weight. Then I'm gonna pour in 250 grams of my yolk mixture. This is calcium lactate. The calcium lactate is what is going to react to the sodium alginate added earlier. Now I'm gonna whisk that together until it's completely incorporated. All right, so with calcium lactate and sodium alginate, you can essentially make a yolk. It's called spherification, and you can do it with any liquid you want. So technically, with these two things, you'll get a little sphere, which will serve as your yolk. So those are the two superstars of this equation. The rest of it is to try to make it taste as close to an egg yolk as humanly possible. But it could not be done without sodium alginate and calcium lactate. Now we're gonna cover up this mixture and we're going to refrigerate it for about an hour. You can also refrigerate it overnight. Basically, you just want to let all the air bubbles that are in here pop and come out so we don't have any air bubbles for the next step. It's very exciting stuff. I'm gonna go refrigerate this and then we can make the magic happen. Okay, so. Here is our yolk mixture already prepared ahead of time. It looks like that, so it solidified a bit in the fridge. So all I'm gonna do is take a tablespoon and essentially just fill this silicone mold. These are gonna be our little yolk shapes. All right, so these are done. Now I'm just going to pop these in the freezer for about 30 to 40 minutes. I'm excited, but I'm gonna be careful and excited. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, please do not smell. Okay, so here we are. We have these cute little yolks frozen. They were in there for about 45 minutes. And I'm gonna do this really quickly because I don't want them to thaw. Basically, I'm gonna pop them out of this little mold here directly into our sodium alginate solution and then just fully coat them. Now, we don't wanna let these touch because if they touch, they're gonna stick together. We wanna make sure these are completely coated, but these just will stay in here for about one to two minutes. So I'll be right back. I'm so nervous right now because this is not the kind of recipe you just go back and like fix a couple things. It's a process. We're gonna take out our yolks. We're gonna drop them in this like lukewarm water to rinse them off. And then it's time to test them. I'm praying this is gonna hold some semblance of a shape because if it doesn't, I'm gonna cry. <gasps> oh my God. That looks like a egg yolk. Look at that. Oh my God, my face is getting red. I can feel it. Okay, I'm gonna stop freaking out. Put it in the water. Whoa! Okay, so at least one of them is really cool. All right, let me just take you out. Wow, this is insane. So I put it in this lukewarm water because you do also want it to be able to thaw a little bit so that it does in fact run when you break it. It's so cool! I've got my yolks at the ready and it's time for me to try this. Let's taste test this, but more importantly, let's see if it's a runny egg yolk, right? That's why we all showed up here today. It may be pretty, it may be the right color. It might be really cute, but is the yolk runny? Let's try it, let's see what happens. That's why we're all here. It's almost impenetrable. <gasps> <gasps> Yay, look at it, it's running. It's not super liquidy, but it's still running. It's running, it's running, it's running away. Look, 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 look. All right, we got it to ooze. I'm very pleased with this. Let's see how it tastes. 
Whoa, okay, I haven't had an egg in a really long time. It's almost like hollandaise sauce that's been injected into an egg yolk. It's got like a little, almost a lemony flavor, but the acidity is from the tomato. This is delicious. I've had the one at Crossroads. This is comparable. Wow, okay, I'm super pumped. I'm gonna go invite everybody in. Let's see what they think. Wow, I can't breathe. This is strong aroma. <gasps> of what? I'm not gonna say. <laughs> Smells like an attic a little bit. An attic? It does. It smells a little. I got a little a best. A hint of abestos. <laughs> this is best. Abestos. How do you say that word? It smells real eggy in here, so I will say that is a success. I smell the scent of a woman. Okay. Well, I hope I don't smell like what this room does smell like, but I'm just gonna dive into this with you because this is very exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, it's just a yolk. <laughs> ah. That's an egg yolk. What the f is going on right now? Is that a real egg? <laughs> no! no! <laughs> what have you done? Cool, cute. Full disclosure, I don't love runny eggs. I think they're gross. Wow! What to do? <laughs> It kind of even smells like an egg. Am I supposed to eat this? Oh yeah. Wait, I'm scared. Wow. It's actually really scary accurate. I'm seeing the yolk run out of this like it's an egg. Like I'm seeing it pour out. It's got a good drip. Oh! It passed the splat test. Oh my God. In a good way? <laughs> you don't want to eat it, do you? I, <laughs> I can tell. It's tangy. I got a taste right. Really? <laughs> you nailed it. Um, Yay! <laughs> I don't love it, I'm sorry. It's a little sour. It's good, it tastes like tomato. It's very savory, like a uh, pasta sauce. I was gonna say like horseradish. I would have guessed like some sort of uh, grainy mixture. Baby food. No. <laughs> Is it a tomato? <laughs> The go. <laughs> you already know. You already know. Fucking Arya gonna get it. He gonna get in here and flirt a little bit. <laughs> I smell the scent of a woman. Arya gonna say some wild shit first. Ah, bonjour. Ah, ooh. They fucking tomato. Tomato. It is tomato. <laughs> he's gonna. You think he's gonna get it? That was really good. That's goddamn right. Gross. You don't like tomatoes? I hate tomatoes. Okay. The flavor was good, it was just surprising. Yeah, it's like a little bit more acidic than an egg. An egg has more of like a subtle taste to it. This was just like flavor. That's kind of like mind boggling, truly. Like, it doesn't taste exactly like an egg, but like the way that yolk came out of there actually freaked me out for a second. <laughs> 10 out of 10. A what, 10 out of 10? Mm -hmm. Are you me? Yeah, I'm not <laughs> with you. You can be though if you want me to. No, Arya, please, that's too much. <laughs> Oh, I'd say it's a 10. This has to be an 8.5. A 7.5. Zero. Nothing like an egg. Nothing like an egg. Yay, oh, I'm so glad you like it. Cool. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Okay. Okay, you can cut. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 Aria, please. I'm John Cena. 